You. Finding life rather dull. Dreaming again of exotic places. Wishing you were somewhere else. We offer you... Escape. Escape with us now to the Yellow Sea and the story of a man who fought the entire Japanese Navy with an ancient submarine and an untrained crew as Alec Hudson tells it in his exciting story, Up Periscope. It happened in 1938. Pearl Harbor was just another naval base somewhere in the Pacific. And China, still further away, was swarming with Japanese invaders. And in 1938, a United States submarine, the S-52, docked at Pearl Harbor. And I walked down her gangplank. No longer commanding officer. Merely Lieutenant Thomas J. Baker, USN, retired. I said a fond farewell to the bosun's mate tucked my commissioning pennant under one arm, moved into the Moana Hotel on Waikiki, just outside Honolulu. And an hour later, I was at the Moana bar, sipping an exotic Hawaiian drink known as bourbon and water, and toasting my lost career in silence. That was until a strange little man behind horn-rimmed glasses tapped my elbow. Excuse me, please. Let me buy this drink for you, Lieutenant Baker. Uh, uh, beg your pardon? Oh, you do not know me, of course. But I have spent some hours searching for you, Lieutenant. I didn't get the name. It is Lee, Sung Lee. You are, of course, the former commanding officer of the submarine S-52. Uh, yeah. You docked at Pearl Harbor on Tuesday, and today, at precisely 12 o'clock noon, you were relieved of your command by your executive officer. Hey, now, wait a minute. You received what your Navy refers to as a medical discharge. It was found that you are deaf in your left ear. Is that not correct, Lieutenant Baker? Yeah. You see, my facts are accurate. Yeah. I am an unofficial representative of the Chinese government. I have come to you with a business proposition. A business proposition? You are available, are you not? Well, yeah, I think you could say that. It is a pity that a young man such as yourself should have his chosen career destroyed by such a trivial matter as the hearing of a watch ticking. You must have been there for the examination. Uh, I am well aware of these matters. All too often your Navy acts somewhat hastily, without due consideration for all of the facts. What's your proposition, Mr. Lee? You are direct. That is good. Lieutenant Baker, I have come to offer you command of a Chinese submarine for action against the Japanese invaders. I beg your pardon? It is true. The Chinese government desires that you take charge of a submarine for operations at the mouth of the Yangtze River. The Yangtze? You are familiar with this area, of course. Then perhaps you would consider the following terms. We will pay you $1,000 each month, plus your expenses. In addition to this amount, you will receive a bonus. Uh, uh, go on, Mr. Lee. A bonus of $50,000 for each major Japanese ship you might sink. $50,000. That is correct. Your answer, Lieutenant Baker? Uh, uh, maybe you better give me a little time, Mr. Lee. Time is of the essence. That is an American expression, is it not? Make it one week, a week from today. Very well. One week from today, and we will have your answer. Need I remind you, Lieutenant, that in this matter, the utmost secrecy must be maintained. Yeah, I'm aware of that, Mr. Lee. Good. Thank you, Lieutenant. China will not forget you. The market for slightly used submarine officers was at low ebb in 1938. So a week later, I met with Mr. Lee and three elderly Chinese. I made a counter-proposal. Would I be allowed to hire three key men of my own choice as assistants? Mr. Lee and friends agreed. And I found myself promoted. Lieutenant Commander Thomas J. Baker, Chinese Navy. I wired three ex-shipmates. Two answered. 
Chuck Young, an engineer who'd been paid off after 16 years of service. And Jimmy Mann, my old chief torpedoman from the boats in Panama. A week later, Young and Mann arrived. And two days after that, Young, Mann, and myself took the clipper for Hong Kong. Our destination, Amoy. On the decks of Amoy, we were met by a bright-looking young man in a light blue gown and a black silk Chinese cap. He introduced himself. You are Captain Baker, is it not correct? I am Wong, your first officer. Now, how do you do, Wong? Uh, this is our engineer, Chief Young. Yeah, howdy. Uh, and our chief torpedoman, Jimmy Mann. Glad to meet you, Mr. Wong. With deepest gratitude and humility, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, sure thing. If you gentlemen will follow me now, I will show you your quarters. Uh, this way, please. Hey, Skip. What does he mean, show us to our quarters? I don't even see a boat. You see a Chinese junk port side to up ahead? Sure, but who signed up for a junk? I thought we was back in a pig boat, maybe. Open your eyes, man. It's a decoy. Subs under that straw and bamboo. Now, what is this, a game? They're fighting a war over here, man. That means Jap bomber patrols. Oh, I get it. Congratulations. Hey, it's stow it. Here comes one. Will you step aboard now, please? All right. Okay. Yeah, that's your thing. This is Lieutenant Lu, Captain. Here's your second officer. How do you do, Lieutenant? Indeed, a pleasure to welcome you aboard, Captain. What a Neptune, it's an s -bar. It is indeed ancient, gentlemen, but we have kept it in good repair. Uh, would you care to inspect our humble ship? Yes, I would. Thanks, Juan. Uh, Lieutenant Lu and myself will see that your quarters are in order, gentlemen. Mm. 1918 class. 12 not surfaced. Eight submerged. That means two main diesels, 500 or siege. I put 10 years in on one of these fish. And four torpedo tubes forward. That ain't much bite, Skipper. No, it's the best we've got. All right, you two, now you've seen her. One S-boat to fight the Jap Navy. Here's where you sign on or off. Young? I'm on, Skipper. Man? We got a crew of Chinese farmers that can't speak a word of English. We got an S-boat somebody dredged up from under the main. We got officers wearing blue kimonos. Man, on or off? Okay, Skipper, I'm on. Man was right about the crew. Outside of Lu and Wong, not a man among them could understand even pidgin English. One thing about our Chinese S-boat was universal, the smell. The smell of fuel oil and acid and humans at work. And we worked around the clock. I was given 30 days to mold 800 tons of iron into a ship and a mass of Chinese peasants into a fighting force. Young complained constantly, the way a chief petty officer or a sergeant complains. So I knew he was making out all right. But Jimmy Mann came up with a unique problem. Okay, Skipper, so now we got torpedo fuel. Best darn torpedo fuel I ever tasted. Since when did you switch to grain alcohol? You know we ain't got no grain alcohol. It's just that I found us a substitute. All right, tell me about it. Well, it seems there was some gin on the docks one day. Several cases. By rigging up my own little still, I was able, with tears in my eyes, to change the gin into torpedo fuel. Well, I'll see if the Chinese government hasn't got a spare Navy cross. Just call me Kentucky Jim Man. We're serving old torpedo in a galley. I made an itemized list out on the Chinese S-boat. It showed no deck guns, sound gear worse than useless, no fire control system for firing the torpedoes, and no flood control. Then one day toward the end of the month, Chuck Young brought up the real problem. I tell you, Skipper, it can't be done. These old batteries are next to worthless. Well, you can't expect much of batteries that have been lying around a back channel for years. Expect much? But, Skipper, batteries are the life of a sub. If we got no batteries, we got no boat. I'm painfully aware of that, Chuck. You know what happens to old batteries? They seep hydrogen. One of these days, we're going to be submerged, and the hydrogen is going to start leaking out, and wham! We blow up like a Chinese firecracker. Then we'll have to be cautious. Cautious? With hydrogen? You can't see the stuff. You can't hear it. You can't smell it. Something makes a spark. The whole boat blows sky high. All right, Chuck. Have you got any suggestions? Well, uh... Well... Uh, outside of forgetting the whole thing. Yeah. That's what I thought. Now get your engine room in order, Chief. We're sailing for the Yank Sea tomorrow. We 
will return to escape. And today's story, Up Periscope, in just a moment. Did you know that for only $10, you can supplement the food rations of a family of four for a whole month? Just send that $10 to CARE, spelled C-A-R-E, New York. CARE guarantees delivery of its packages to 11 different countries in Europe, as well as to India, Israel, and Japan. Don't forget to include your name and address and the name and address of the family you want to receive the CARE package because CARE is a person-to-person international goodwill service. And now, back to Escape! We sailed north through the Formosa Strait, traveling submerged, surfacing only after sunset. It took us 10 days to get to the latitude of the Saddle Islands. And in those 10 days, my Chinese crew behaved like veterans. Just north of the Saddles, we took up station across the most probable route of the convoys coming down from Japan. One afternoon, we were in the middle of one of those Saddle Island fogs with a five-knot wind that blew the stuff in patches. At about five o'clock, a patch of clear weather blew in and we went down. My first officer, Lieutenant Wong, was standing next to me. When I brought her to Periscope Death and took a look around, my heart nearly jumped out of my mouth. You have sighted something, Captain? One, two, three, four, five. Good Lord. It is. Japanese convoy, Captain. More than a convoy, Wong. An entire division. Heavy stuff. Battleships, cruisers, destroyers. Here, have a look. Ah, ah yes, Captain. It is as you say. Four or five thousand yards. They're lying stern too. They're anchored waiting for the fog to lift. Wong, stand by to submerge. But, Captain, Captain, an entire Japanese fleet. Well, what do you think we're here for? Down Periscope. Signal General Headquarters. We're going down to attack. <laughs> Wong took the helm, and Lou was the diving officer, chanting his orders in sing-song Cantonese to the bow and stern plainsman. And in two minutes, our S-boat was ready to attack. Torpedo tubs loaded and ready, skipper. Steady on course 210, Captain. Uh, We'll run parallel at uh, 1,500 yards. Hard right rudder. Hard right rudder, sir. Up periscope. Up Up periscope, periscope, sir. sir. Steady on course. Steady on course zero nine zero. Zero nine zero, sir. Once again, how? I will take the battle wagon first, one. That's Matsui class. Come left, five degrees. Come left, five degrees, sir. Uh, there she is, one. Lying there, inviting a tin fish. Steady on course zero right five, sir. Start timing. Ten second. Nine second. Eight seconds. Seven seconds. Six seconds. Five seconds. Stand by to fire one. Four seconds. Three seconds. Two seconds. One second. Time up. Fire one. Oh, hold it down, Lou. Don't broach her. Hold on. My eyes. Don't be in it. Go. Fire two. One, two. Three, four, fire three! <laughs> Steady, one. Steady, sir. Steady. Fire four! <laughs> Down, periscope! Watch it, low. Left, full rudder, full speed ahead. You know, I ain't going down, my leg. Take it down to 100 feet. Just on, just on, you know. Come to course, three, four, zero. Three, four, zero, sir. Down to 100 feet, Captain. Captain, did we... Wait a minute, wait. Skipper, it's ahead. Two. Three. Four oh, clean hits, oh, four out of four. Four, four yeah, ten fish in our battle wagon's yeah, guts, Jimmy, yeah. huh? Well, just don't stand there, man. Reload. We're going back for more. Aye, aye, Skipper. The tubes are practically ready. Stand by to bring her up, Lou. Aye, aye, Captain. But 
four hits come surely. Watch out, battleships can take it, Wong. We want to be sure. Destroyers dropping depth charges. They'll be spraying them like hand grenades. Right full rudder. Right full rudder, sir. The boats are ready to fire again, Skipper. Good. Stand by. Uh, course 250. 250, sir. Take her up, Lou. Aye, aye, sir. I had time for one quick periscope exposure, and they told me everything I could want to know. The Jap battleship lay on her side, her rail under. She was sinking. On the horizon, a group of destroyers were depth charging the daylights out of some innocent fish. The fog was drifting in. It would be dark in half an hour. Now, there was no use wasting another torpedo on the battleship, and the destroyers were too tough to hit. I had six torpedoes left, and I wanted to save them for the big boys. I let Wong have a look through the periscope. Oh, the battleship. We are sunk battleship. Wait until we report this to our leaders. Yeah, we aren't finished yet. Hey, Captain, look, quickly. Another big ship close to us. Let me have it. Uh, it's cruiser. 10,000 tons at least. All right, sailors, there's our next target. Left full rudder! Left full rudder, sir! Major Jordelli! Stand by to fire one! Yeah, we'll have to gamble this one, Juan. Yeah, I guess we speed at 30 knots. Course, 260. We'll take a 90 degree track. Down, Periscope. Full speed ahead! Full speed ahead! Juan, start timing. Ten seconds. Nine seconds. Eight seconds. Seven seconds. Six seconds. Just at that instant, a Jap destroyer passed Four over us seconds. going like a shark after Barracuda. But it was two too late to stop now. One second. And I gave the word to fire Five one. Up. Then two. Then three. Then four. And we headed down fast. <laughs> I gotta take a look, Juan. Lou, take her up to periscope death. Periscope death? Aye, aye, Captain. Skipper, I gotta talk to you. Come on, just a minute. Periscope death, Captain. Up periscope. Up a periscope. Cruiser's down by the stern, Jimmy. We got her. Captain, listen to me. The fog's coming in again. Captain, cell number 72 has revised itself. The storage batteries are going out. Well, rip up the battery decks and get those jumpers across. I'll hold her speed down as low as possible. Right, Skipper. Take her down to 100 feet. Captain, to periscope. Destroyer bearing down on us full speed. Let me look. Forget the batteries. Full speed. Take her down, Lou. Take her down. Crash dive. Crash dive. Right, Captain. Come here. Continue. Continue. We moved down in a hurry. Whatever Lou was saying in Cantonese did the trick. Luck was with us. But we'd had a lifetime of luck in the past 20 minutes. It couldn't last forever. And it didn't. <laughs> A sheet of blue flame shot through the boat. It followed the hull plates and flashed wherever moisture had collected. It made a blue halo around the sweaty faces of the men. It didn't seem hot. No one was burned. But the Chinese crew screamed in terror. Hydrogen. Hydrogen given off by the storage batteries. Something had touched it off before enough could build up to make a human bomb out of all of us. Now we had to surface, but we couldn't. Destruction was up there in the form of a Jap destroyer. Destruction down here. Hydrogen. Suddenly, I glanced at the depth gauge. We were coming up. The bombing planes, paralyzed with fear, had frozen the controls on a hard rise. Get her down, Lou! Get her down! I am trying, Captain. He does not understand. Well, breaking surface, Captain. I cannot free the man from the controls, Captain. Captain, through a periscope. Destroyer bearing down. The impact threw all of us to the deck. I got back up in time to see water gushing down through the conning tower hatch. A direct hit. A silver structure destroyed. Close all watertight doors. Secure the hatches. Captain, it lights. The lights are gone out. The circuit breaker's knocked out. Switch out the emergency lights. Young, can you work on the circuit breakers? Aye, aye, sir. We're getting water in the torpedo room. Never mind that, man. Help Young with the circuit breakers. Aye, aye, sir. The crew, Captain, they're very frightened. The lights, the lights are on. Hello, what's our depth? 150 feet, Captain. We are sinking rapidly. Hard rise on the bow and stern planes. The circuit break is okay, Skipper, but the pumps can't handle this water. Well, take charge of the air manifold, Jimmy. Lower a little of number two main ballast. Aye, aye, Captain. 200 feet, Captain. We're going down too fast, Captain. 
225 ki- feet, Captain. No, no, Captain. Wait. No, we are rising at 200 feet. Captain, I do not understand. 175 feet. We are rising rapidly. Man, run a little air out of the ballast tank. Tim, what is happening? First, we are too deep, then we move up too swiftly. It's the water inside the boat. It rushes forward, and we dive, then back aft, and we go up. Still coming up, Captain. 100 feet. It's no use, Skipper. The pumps can't handle our weight fast enough. You sure the Kingston valves are open in the main ballast tank? Yes, sir. 50 feet, Captain. Nearing surface. Well, we'll have to take our chances on the surface, man. Blow all main ballasts. Blow all main ballasts, Captain. Captain, Captain. What is it, Wag? The crew, they don't understand what is happening. Water is filling ship. Well, we'll be surfaced in two minutes. But they have taken the knives from the ship's galley. They are crazy with fear. Hold them off, I tell you. We're nearing surface. Periscope depth, Captain. Oh, never mind that, Lou. Take her up to the surface. We're okay, Skipper. We're coming up. Captain, listen to me. These poor farmers know nothing of submarines. They must be stopped. Skipper, they're going for the hatch. Oh, and stop them. We're not surfaced yet. Nearing surface, Captain. I can't pull them back to this. Captain, the water's pouring in on the batteries. Those crazy fools have opened the hatches. Surface, Captain. Skipper, the batteries, the salt water's pouring onto the batteries. Captain, what is this green oh, gas? Oh, pass the word for all hands to abandon ship. Skipper, if that chlorine gets to us, we're finished. Let's get out of here. Okay, where's Young? I don't know. He was in a <coughs> Chinese mob a few minutes ago. <coughs> But a glory spread. Yeah. Let's get young. Follow me. <laughs> Skip, I don't see. Skip a look. Young. Young. A meat cleaver buried in his skull. He's dead, Skip. Well, he tried to stop that mob. He got that for his efforts. <laughs> Let's get out of here, Skip. Yeah, you're right, Jimmy. We can't help young. <laughs> this way. <laughs> you okay, Jimmy? Sure thing, Skipper. Those poor devils forgot to take their life jackets. We can't help them, Skipper. They brought it on themselves. Captain. Captain, you all right? Yeah, all right, Warren. Where's Lou? I I don't know. We can still save the ship, can't we, Skipper? It's the the gas that drove us out. Three men can rub a sub. (coughs) Warren, the S-boat belongs to your country. We leave her this way. She might drift into the hands of the Japs. My, (coughs) My country needs a submarine. We, we have so few weapons. Well, it's you and man and me. Do you think we can save her? No. You, you have done your best, Captain. It, it's for you to decide. All right. Man, take the forward hatches. Wong, you take aft. We're going to scuttle her. We scuttled the S-boat, Wong, man, and myself. Then we drifted apart in the black, muddy Yangtze River. I looked back just once to see my boat go down steadily by the stern. She was a pig iron wench of uncertain antecedents, but she'd been all mine, and she met her end like a lady. The last thing I remembered was the black water in the night. When I regained consciousness, I was aboard a Chinese fishing junk. And with the fish, I was delivered the following day to Ningpo. Enough! Gentlemen, you must contain your emotions. This man, this American, must be tried fairly. As fairly as he has sunk our submarine. Do not forget that, worthy one. You uh, have heard his story. It is now up to us to believe it. But you haven't heard my story. You've kept me locked up in your filthy jail for two days. You haven't let me wire my government. You haven't let me do anything. Please, please, Lieutenant. You are making this most unpleasant. Indeed, we have listened to your strange tale. Uh, You yourself have admitted ordering our noble submarine to be sunk. Yeah, but what about the rest of it? The Jap battleship we sunk in the cruiser. Surely, Lieutenant, you are not still portraying yourself in this ridiculous, heroic fantasy. But I tell you, we sunk them, a battleship and a cruiser. Then we were forced to abandon ship. (laughs) Ask the Japanese, they'll tell you. We got two of their major ships before they got us. (laughs) 
Surely, Lieutenant, you are not so naive as to believe that our enemy, the Japanese, would admit to this, even if it were true. Uh, tell your distinguished superiors, these gentlemen gathered here, just who saw these imagined sinkings? I did. Oh, and, I saw and so did Wong, my first officer, Lieutenant Wong. He saw them, both of them. Ah, so there was someone else. And pray, tell us then, where is Lieutenant Wong? Uh, I don't know. He drifted away from me the, during the night. He drifted away from you during the night. I believe we may now weigh the evidence. The crime is treason against the government of China. Gentlemen, how do you find this man? You see, Lieutenant, you deserve the maximum penalty. Death tomorrow morning before the firing squad. However, we are all too aware of your American citizenship. Therefore, we shall suspend this sentence under one condition, that you leave at once and never return to China again. Is so? So I left China. My $1,000 a month salary, my bonus now worth $100,000, the unofficial Mr. Lee. I saw none of it or him. In the end, I was glad to be alive and to have discovered that I had my belly full of submarines for life. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you Up Periscope by Alec Hudson, especially adapted for radio by William Frug and starring Hi Everback. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell and Edgar Berrier, with Lou Krugman, Ben Wright, Byron Kane, and Charles Lung. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week, escape with us to England and the story of an innocent man caught up in a murderous web of international intrigue as Jeffrey Household tells it in his exciting new novel, A Rough Shoot. A dramatic milestone on Broadway Playhouse tomorrow night and most of these same CBS stations. It's The Petrified Forest, starring Wendell Corey in the noted Robert E. Sherwood drama of romantic adventure. For a listening treat, be sure not to miss The Petrified Forest on CBS Radio tomorrow night. It's a sparkling addition to Broadway Playhouse's long list of outstanding dramatic productions. This is Roy Rowan speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.